Here's a sketch of this problem. Find the area bounded by 3 sine x and 3 cosine x. You draw both functions. They are in a total from minus 3 to 3. Now they say we don't need the whole thing because actually what I'm trying to mention here, there are lots of bounded areas between them, not just lots of them, infinitely many, because sine and cosine together, they kind of create something which will remind you a DNA uh, spiral or and so on, right? It does remind you that. So there are infinitely many areas that they enclose. In this case, it told us, please start at zero. So this piece will be important. And then end up at 0 0.8 pi. So a bit smaller than pi, right? So somewhere over here. Because one times pi gives you pi. So 0 0.8, it's a bit less than one pi. So this is what we're looking at. Like so, do you agree? This is the area. It's already naturally divided in two areas. They're not symmetrical, so we cannot use a symmetry. If you can, sometimes it's convenient to do A1, A2, and A3 are all the same, so find one and multiply by three. Or if it's halves, find the half, multiply by two, and so on. But in this case, it's clearly A1 and A2. So we're gonna have solution. Step one, sketch the graph. Step two, Step one, here's the graph. Step two, we were defining area as A1 plus A2, and each area will need its own work. We need to find points of intersections. So the first point and the last point are pretty obvious. What is the first point? Zero, zero. The last point, we will have the input of 0 0.8 pi, and then we're gonna plug it in in the integral later. So it is up until 0 0.8 pi. The only point of intersection missing is this one. How to find this point? Set two function equal to each other, because this is where sine and cosine meet, right? So point of intersection. Again, poi, it's actually point of inflection in mass, in English, in American Stewart books but you also can po call it point of intersection. Where is three sine x matches with three cosine x? In infinitely many points, but we're only gonna choose the first one, right? So, if you divide by three, and in general, actually, you can divide by three cosine x, then it becomes three over three is one, so it's gonna be sine x over cosine x equals one. But it is tangent x equals one. And then you just ask yourself, when is tangent equals to one? <coughs> Pi or four and others, right? But we don't need more than that. Check it out if it looks uh, good. Pi over 4 is actually between 0 and pi over 2. So actually, it does look really good on my graph, which was supposed to be a sketch, but I'm impressed with myself that it was pretty good. Pretty good sketch. So this is pi over 4. Or we can call it arc tangent, right? So also remember, if it's some kind of complicated angle, then just call it arc tangent 1. That is a point. So this is you can call it arc tangent one, or actually solve for it. So x is pi over four, because we are on 0, 0, 0.8 pi, including endpoints. We don't need others. Three, let's choose the case, top minus bottom or left or right minus left. Which one do you choose? Case one or case two? The one suggestion was to choose right minus left. Then one function should be always on the right and the other one should be always on the left. But do we have that? Yes, yeah, so it should be top minus the bottom. But good guess. Sometimes it's both. In this case, I definitely see that there are two functions on the right and that's why I know it's not going to work. So one function is always on the top and the other function is always at the bottom. For A1, what function is this in blue on the top? cosine x, which is 3 cosine x, at the top. And what function at the bottom? Well, we only have two. 3 sine x is at the bottom. 
Are we ready to write down first integral? Yeah, everything is here. Everything is ready. Keep staring at the picture and then tell me what is A1? A1 is what? Integral from what to what? 0 pi over 4, because that's my point of intersection, that's my poi. Or arc 10 1, arc 10 of whatever that thing is. And then function at the top, we agree, was what? 3 cos x minus pink function at the bottom was 3 sin x dx. The integral is pretty straightforward, which is good news. In this chapter, we don't give you hard integrals because we want you to practice to create the integral, which is more important in this case than actually solving it. That's the first integral. Let's create the second one right away just to practice the creation of it. The second one, do we have all the information? We have the beginning point, which is now pi over 4, is, that's your a. We have the ending point, which is 0 0.8 pi. But now the order of function changed. What is the function at the top now? Sine 3 sine x is at the top, and then cosine moved to the bottom. And that's a pretty cool idea of sine and cosine. They do infant, they create infinitely many enclosed areas, but they keep changing the order. Wherever sine used to be at the bottom becomes at the top and the bottom again and the top again. Same with cosine. And that's pretty cool when you work with waves. That's aerodynamics for you. That's a signal, sound signals for you. Even image recognition is created through waves of colors and pixels. So all of this is pretty cool, of course. Wind, waves of the ocean are also signs and cosines. Give me the integral starts from what? Pi over 4 ends with 0 0.8 pi, yeah? Which function is at the top this time? Sine, exactly, 3 sine, minus 3 cosine x. So they switched top and the bottom. What do you think? Which area is going to be more dominant when you add those together? Because you see, they are actually not the same. The second one, right? The second one looks bigger. So for example, if the second one is below x-axis, the total thing will show that. It will show you that it will be smaller or bigger or whatever it is. So kind of there's some intuition behind this, which area contributes more to the calculation. Cool. So now we can add those together and get the answer. A is A1 plus A2 equals 2. I'm integrating. You cannot merge those two integrals. Actually, you could probably. Why not? But let's integrate separately just to keep it well. So you integrate 3 cosine becomes 3 sine x minus 3 sine gives you plus 3 cosine. So minus minus gives you plus. Plug 0 and pi over 4 for the first one. Integrate the second one. 3 sine gives you minus 3 cosine x. 3 cosine gives you plus sine x. Be careful with signs. You check if I'm making it wrong or not. Pi over 4, 0 0.8 pi. Equals, calculate carefully, 3 sine, what is sine of pi over 4, then multiply that by 3. What is cosine of pi over 4? What is sine of pi over 4 anyways? Square root of 2 over 2. And then cosine, same thing. That's actually exactly where they meet. And that's why tangent is 1. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, get it together. Get it, get it together. And I have approximate answer in front of me. Approximate answer is 6.15 units squared units squared remember it's an area should be positive what do you think about this pretty cool idea i like that it has connection with uh, lots of biological events signs and cosines we do push it so much because they're everywhere and in the next chapter series and sequences we're actually going to explain that they are everywhere 
And in polar equations, there will be the start of everything. So sines and cosines actually is the base for lots of lots of knowledge in real life. 